Clown is, as you'd probably assume, and rightly so, a horror movie. It's presented and produced also by Eli Roth, and although I'm not a huge fan of his work, I have followed some of it, such as Hostel and Cabin Fever, and although he didn't direct this particular movie, you can certainly see little flares of his style, particularly with reference to the gore used in the film and not shying away from that kind of thing, that I think, as well as of course funding, really benefited the quality of this movie. This was a movie which I went into and really wanted it to succeed. I wanted it to be a good Good movie. I love clowns as a horror concept. Personally, I've never found them to be scary. I think they're way too cool to be scary. And you've got a lot of, not necessarily backstory to work with with a clown, but it's very visually rich. You can very easily make a monster out of a clown. And so I was really excited to see what they did with this concept. Now, the movie had kind of a staggered release date. It was initially released in 2014. It didn't reach the UK until 2015 and then the States in 2016. It has a very small budget of $1.5 million or thereabouts. And it didn't make that much at the box office, only just over $2 million. So it did make something of a profit, but not a huge one. Certainly not the profit that I think this movie deserves. Deserves. Because having seen this movie, I think it's one of the better horror movies to come out over recent years. I would actually put this movie up there with other more recent horror movies like The Barbadook and Splinter, also movies which didn't do as well as they should have financially. Now, Clown has three primary characters played by Andy Powers, Peter Stormare, and Laura Allen. And you've got a number of supporting characters as well, such as his son, a father-in-law, but they're not as important. The son, yes, to some degree, but they're all characters which are kind of cookie cutter to some degree it's supposed to be that kind of way they're not supposed to be tormented characters with amazing backstories that you delve into it's just a normal family a happy family to more or less of a degree that has a terrible situation happen to them now, without spoiling anything that you can't see in the trailer anyway, the story revolves very simply around a father who isn't able to get a clown for his son's birthday party, who then finds a clown costume and dresses up as the clown himself for his son's birthday party. Then, however, he finds that he cannot remove the clown costume, and over time it begins to turn him into a monster. Now, all of that you can see in the trailer, so it's not a spoiler, and it's a concept which is simple enough to potentially be really good as long as it's carried out in the right way, and if the production quality can back up how beautifully simple a horror concept that could be. Because whenever you can create a horror monster that is kind of tragic, maybe a monster which doesn't want to be doing the things it's doing but has some sort of overwhelming power from somewhere else forcing it to do that, you can kind of identify with that. Obviously it can't happen in real life, but you can identify with the tragedy of a situation like that. Somebody who cannot resist. Maybe they're just not mentally powerful enough, or physically powerful enough, or emotionally powerful enough. And that's the case in this movie. This movie, to clarify though, is not designed to be emotionally deep. Not from what I saw at least. It's a movie which is purely for the fun of horror, to give great opportunity in particular to beautiful makeup, some practical effects, but not so much. This is more a horror film which showcases great makeup rather than great special effects. There are some special effects, but not as many as you'd assume being associated with Eli Roth. This is certainly not as gory as, say, Cabin Fever or certainly not as gory as Hostel, but it's gory in its own way. And one of the things that I like about this film, without spoiling anything, but if you watch the film you'll understand what I mean by this, is that it doesn't pull any punches. This movie, despite not being the kind of movie that you would expect to be taboo in certain ways, goes there. It's not afraid to go there. It will do that. And to be honest, the only issue which I had with this film was that there wasn't enough death. 
Now, of course, that sounds very morbid, but in a film like this about a crazy monster clown, you want a lot of death. It's a ripe situation to have plenty of wonderful, over-the-top gore, maybe even in a tongue-in-cheek manner. And although the film does certainly have that, it's not a non-stop action ride. With some horror films, such as Alien, for instance, once it gets going, it's non-stop. Once the alien kicks in, it's just non-stop hunter and hunted. With a film like this, it's a little bit of a slower burn. It's not a slow burn, but it's a little slower. It certainly doesn't have as much gore, death and destruction as you'd expect from an Eli Roth movie, or a movie that he's associated with. The movie is certainly designed to have a very serious tone. It's about a clown, but it is not a comedy by any means. I don't recall there being any outstanding comedy moment or comic relief in the film. It's serious, it has a serious tone, and I found that that actually juxtaposes really well with the bright, colourful nature of a clown. And that works really well in this film. The use of colour, as you'll see if you watch the movie, is very well done in ways that aren't as obvious. Now, what about our individual ratings? Well, first of all, as always, we have the story and the plot of the film. Well, as I said, it's a very simple plot. What they do with the plot is great, and the production value of the film, mainly thanks to Eli Roth, is really good. It's a lot higher than it easily could have been. This could have been a forgettable movie very easily were it done wrong, but it wasn't. It was done to a very high standard, and that made the premise good. It really delivered on the potential that the film had. So overall, I'm not giving it an amazing result, because that would be insulting to movies that do have more complex storylines or premises or characters, but overall I'm going to give it a 6 for the story and plot. It's certainly above a baseline of 5, but it's not rocket science, it's not phenomenal, it's not emotionally deep, and even the characters are relatively shallow as far as the film goes. Now, speaking of the characters, what about those characters and their motivations in the movie? Well, for that, I'm going to give the film an 8. And to be honest, the main reason why I'm giving an 8 is due to the main character, the father in the film, who turns into this clown. And it's his performance that carries the film. There are some other performances in the movie, I would say most notably that character played by Peter Stormare and also his son, which are probably two of the other best performances in the film, but even then they are very much supporting, they're in the background, he carries the film. This process that he goes through changing into this monster is essentially the main meat of the story. And he does it really well. He plays a tormented character, someone who is not an evil person by any means. And I actually really enjoyed watching him change into something that he is not, this monster. It was a great transformation, the way he's fighting with himself, primarily mentally, but also sometimes physically. And that leads to some great special effects as well. So overall, for the characters, mainly thanks to the main character, I'm going to give it an 8. But overall, were it not for his performance, I would have to say that some of the other characters are, as I mentioned just now, a little shallow. They are kind of stereotypical characters, which for a story like this is kind of what you want, because that's the point of the story. But were it not that story, the characters weren't very good. In this film it works, in other movies it wouldn't have. But overall, as I said, it's an 8. As far as the visuals, the look of the film, the colour grading, the special effects, the makeup, etc., I'm going to give the film a 9. Now, you may be expecting it to be a 10, given how much I said I enjoyed the monster and the makeup effects, etc., but the main reason why I'm not giving it a full 10 is actually for the reason that I mentioned earlier. The gore is fantastic, it goes places which you wouldn't expect a movie to go, and the makeup in particular is fantastic, on the clown especially. But, especially coming from, again, Eli Roth, I would have expected more. Not necessarily complete blood and gore, but more frequency to the aggression and to the death. Were that there, I would have scored it a full 10. As it is, what was used was fantastic, I would have just liked a little bit more, because 
inherently having a crazy clown monster allows you to legitimately justify having crazy happenings in a film. And although there certainly were crazy happenings, there weren't quite as many as I would have liked. But, overall, it's still a 9, and that's perfectly respectable. As far as the audio, the soundtrack, the music of the film, I'm going to give it a 6, again, like with the story. And the reason why is because, as with many movies that I review, I personally don't find the soundtrack of many films overly memorable. If I hear them again, out of context, I may not know what particular movie it came from. It doesn't mean I don't like the soundtrack or the sound design, it just doesn't shout out and grab me. In the case of this movie, as with many other films, it does the job, it does what it needs to do, it's dramatic in dramatic scenes, emotional in emotional scenes, etc. So overall, it did its job, maybe a little bit better than some others, which is why I give it a 6, but it wasn't amazing or overly memorable. And finally, for, as always, the most subjective to me personally, the rewatchability and entertainment factor. And for that, I'm going to give Clown a 9. And the reason why I'm giving it a 9 pretty much goes without saying. It's rewatchable because it's a simple story, it's a lot of fun, you've got gore, you've got horror, you've got a clown monster, which, I mean, who doesn't love a clown monster? And so it's a perfect movie that you don't necessarily need to hang on to every word, so it's great for watching with a group of friends, you can all be talking and not really miss that much. There are certain scenes, of course, where you need to be listening, but mostly the film is a visual experience. And the moments that require you to listen and be quiet, the whole group of people will probably listen and be quiet because it catches your attention. Overall though, I would say that it's a perfect popcorn horror movie and the only reason why I'm not giving it a full 10 is because the pacing is a little bit slower than I would have liked. It takes its time slightly too much. Not ridiculously too much. It's certainly not as slow as something like Arrival or Bone Tomahawk. There is enough gore put throughout the film to keep you interested all the time, but the pacing could have been just a fraction quicker. But overall, I still really enjoyed it and will definitely rewatch it again a number of times. And as I said early on in this review, I would put this movie, as far as recent horror movies go, up there with my personal favourites of recent years, such as, as I said, The Babadook, Splinter, various others, The Harbinger Down, various other movies like that, which I really, really enjoyed. They didn't do well financially, and not necessarily critically either, but I really like them nonetheless. So if you haven't seen Clown, I definitely recommend checking it out if you get the chance, definitely if you're a horror fan. If you want more, more depth, more happening in the background with the characters, etc., it's not really that kind of movie, but if you just want popcorn horror fun and a scary monster clown, it definitely delivers. But that's it overall for this particular review. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.